In today's video, I'll show you the best streaming settings for Twitch in 2024. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. Twitch and OBS have had a lot of updates recently, and that's why I'm making the updated version for the best streaming settings for Twitch itself. If you haven't already updated your OBS, make sure to do so because some settings are only in the recent versions. So first things that we're going to do is obviously go to the settings that are located on the bottom, click on the settings and it will open up the settings themselves. So first things first, what we're going to do is go to the stream section over here. What you need to do is choose the service that is obviously Twitch because you're going to be streaming on Twitch and then choose the server that is the closest to you. So whatever the server is the closest to you, choose that. If you don't know which one it is, you can just choose auto recommended and it will use the recommended server. Make sure to also connect your Twitch account to OBS. That way it's just easier to change some settings and overall it's just better. You have the chat and activity feed and everything already built in. Uh, if you already watched my last video, then you know about the enhanced broadcasting on Twitch. If you don't know what the hell that is, Basically, you will get the quality change options like on YouTube where you can change from 1080p, 720p, 480p, whatever. All of those quality change options guaranteed uh, on your stream if you enable this setting. If you don't enable it, you will not really get it unless you're a partner. So make sure to enable the setting. You can leave everything else on a default over here on auto. Do not change any of this stuff. Now, what you need to do is go to the advanced options and over here, you can enable better TTV and Franker Z as the add-ons because there's just no point of not adding them. They're really, really good and they add um, good emotes and just better, you know, chat experience overall. So make sure to enable these if you don't have them and also enable the ignore streaming service setting recommendations. This way you can go up to 8,000 bit rate when you're streaming on Twitch. That is the highest bit rate you can stream on. It does say 6,000 over here, but you can ignore that. Everyone knows that the highest bit rate is 8,000. So now that we've gone over these settings on the stream tab, we want to go to the video tab right over here. So click on the video tab and here you're going to see your base canvas resolution, which should be your native monitor resolution. So if you have a 2K monitor, choose uh, 1440p. If you have a 1080p monitor or Full HD, make sure to choose Full HD. Just whatever monitor you have, choose the highest possible resolution over here. And now for the output scaled resolution, that is the resolution you're going to be using when streaming on Twitch. Keep in mind, you can go up to 1080p right now, but that is not really recommended because you can only stream on 8000 bit rate. The quality just won't be that good. You will need more bit rate, but Twitch doesn't support it. So the best resolution that I've found that I've been using for a few years now and a lot of other people have recommended is 936p. If you check over here, you won't even see this option. You will have to manually put this number into the uh, output scale resolution. That way you can stream in 936p. Every number that is divided by 8 works the best for resolution. And this is divided by 8. So put in 1664 by 936, just write it down and you will be streaming in 936p. It's like in between 1080 and 720. 720 just doesn't look good. 1080 just doesn't get the full experience from 8,000 bit rate. So this is like in between and it works the best for high you know, motion games like FPS games or just like shooters or whatever else. So I highly recommend 936p here. And then on the downscale filter, you can choose Lanzos if your PC can handle it, if you have good PC. If you cannot really handle it, you can go down to buy linear. Just go around and play with these whatever works the best for you. Uh, common FPS values, you should always stream on 60 FPS, at least that's what I recommend. Uh, usually 60 is recommended for gaming and 30 is recommended for, you know, just anything else, just chatting, whatever. But I recommend streaming in 60 FPS. It just looks way better and everyone else is streaming in 60 FPS. So I don't see the reason why you shouldn't. Always put 60 FPS over here. Now we're going to go into the output settings and change the most important settings so your stream looks the best and it doesn't lag. So now that we are in the output settings over here, keep in mind that once you enable the enhanced broadcasting, you will not be able to change half of these settings over here. So what you need to do is disable this for now and change these settings and then go back and enable the enhanced broadcasting. That way it just does it does not allow you to change these settings beforehand for some reason. So what you want to do is go to the output mode over here, go into the advanced so you see all of these settings over here. Now. We're going to go into the audio track. You should always leave this on one and then the audio encoder. This should be the default one. This is the only audio encoder you can use. Leave this on. And now we have the Twitch VOD track. So what is a Twitch VOD track? 
If you don't already know from the other videos, basically you can enable the VOD track and whatever music plays in that track, it will not be saved in the VOD. The VOD is your stream saved as a video on Twitch's servers. So if you're playing a copyrighted music, you can still get DMCA'd live, but you cannot get DMCA'd from the video. Just like the music is not going to be on that VOD at all. It's just going to be on the live stream and that's it. So there are still chances of you getting DMCA'd live, but there are no chances for you to get DMCA'd from the video because the music does not exist there. So use this with your own caution. Be careful. You can still get DMCA'd. I've never really seen anyone get DMCA'd on the you know live stream but there's still a chance. Don't be thinking that you're not going to be DMC at 100%. Make sure to enable this. It's a good thing and set it to the second track over here. Now on the video encoder, you're going to see a few video encoders. This is the most important thing for the streaming settings. So I have an NVIDIA GPU and I have the NVIDIA NVENC H264. If you have an AMD GPU, you're going to see something like AMD FSR or something similar to that. That is basically the equivalent of the NVIDIA NVENC. You're going to also see Quick Sync. That's if you don't really have a good GPU. And you have X264, which is a CPU encoder, which you should never use, especially now with the recent GPUs. They are so efficient and they can play and stream at the same time with almost no performance loss. So you should always use either NVIDIA NVENC or AMD's uh, version of the same thing. So enable that. And then on the rescale output, we're not going to touch anything. We're going to go down to the encoder settings. So on the rate control, you should always use CBR. That is the best rate control for streaming. On the bitrate, this really depends on your internet speed. So before we change any of this bitrate stuff, we want to go to the speedtest.net and run the speed test. So let's do that. So if you run a speed test, you will see these results right over here. Obviously, this, these results are mine and yours will differ. But I have an extremely fast internet speed. As you can see, I have gigabit, which means that I have very fast upload speed. This is the only thing you should be looking at, the upload speed, because that is going to be used for streaming. If you don't already know, like I said before, 8,000 bit rate is the highest bit rate you can stream on Twitch. That's basically 8 upload. If you have about 10 upload, you can stream on 8,000 uh, 8, bit rate, no problem. You should always use 80% of your upload for stream and then 20% for anything else. Playing games, watching something, something always is sending packets online and uploading something. So in, if you're using 100% of your upload, it might crash or lag your stream. So you should always use 80% of your upload speed for the stream and then just keep 20% for everything else. So if you have extremely fast internet, like above 10, 15, you can go with 8,000 bit rate, no problem. If you have lower, then use that rule that I was talking about before. So whatever your internet speed, choose that bit rate. Highest is 8,000. Keyframe interval, keep this on zero. And then on the preset tab over here, this will be a different depending on what video encoder you're using. Because I'm using the NVIDIA NVENC, I have these presets right here. So you can choose whatever uh, preset you want. Slowest is the best quality and fastest is the lowest quality, but it will uh, not use that many PC resources. So it really depends on what kind of a GPU you have. If you don't really have the newest one and your PC is lagging, then you need to lower this down until it stops lagging or your game lagging as well. So play with these, figure out what works the best. I'm using P7 slowest, but I think the, the, the medium one, or the slow one is usually the default one. So just keep that if you're having issues. Tuning, keep this on high quality. There's just no difference between high quality and low latency. Multipass, keep this on single. And then profile, put this on high. The other thing that you should be changing is max B frames, put this on two and keep everything else as is. If you're having some issues, you can even enable psycho visual tuning, but that's just, you know, if you're having problems or not. The second tab we're going to change is audio. So over here, we go to audio and you'll see all of these tracks over here. I think the default is 192 or 160, but if your PC can handle it, it doesn't really use any extra resources, but it does make the audio sound way better. Put this on 320 bitrate for all of the tracks. Once you've done that, you're basically set up and now we need to change some of the Twitch VOD track stuff that I was talking about before. We also want to go to the audio settings over here and enable our uh, microphone and our desktop audio. Because I have a mixer, it's a bit different for me, but you want to go to the microphone and choose your microphone over here. And then on desktop audio, you want to choose your speakers or your headphones, whatever you're using. Also make sure that your sample rate is set to 48 kilohertz because it is just better than 44.1. 
If you've changed all of these settings, make sure to go back and also enable Twitch Enhanced Broadcasting, like I said before, just, you know, so you don't forget. And now what we want to do is enable the Twitch VOD track that I was talking about and, you know, make it actually work. So if you're playing music through Spotify or YouTube music or any other program like that, you will have to enable that in sources. So go to the sources, click on the plus, and then go into the application audio capture beta. So over here, you can choose your uh, program that you're running music from. I'm using Spotify and I already have it added. So I'll just use Spotify over here, but add your Spotify right over there. And then you will see it over here on top. Make sure the, top, the eye is enabled like this. So it is playing and then you will see it on the right side in the audio mixer. Now that you see it in the audio mixer, you need to right click it and then go to the advanced audio properties. So click on the advanced audio properties It's going to open up this whole menu that looks very complicated, but it's actually super simple. You need to find your microphone and your desktop audio. So whatever you set up in the previous step, enable those and make sure these are set as track one. Disable all of the other tracks over here and make sure it's only set for a track one. And now you need to find Spotify and then enable only track two for Spotify and disable everything else. So what this does is it plays everything from track one on both VOD and your live stream and only on the track two, it only plays that on live and not on the VODs. Because we set up the Twitch VOD track, it basically only plays it for the live viewers while they're watching, you know, the live stream. But as soon as it goes to the VOD, as soon as they, you know, it goes to a video, it is no longer there. So everything that you want played uh, live and in the VOD, set it as track one and everything that you want only played on live, but not on the VOD, put it on track two. And that's basically it. Once you've done that, click on close and you are set. And that's basically it. I hope this video helped you. If it did, make sure to drop a like. It would mean the world. If you don't already know, I do stream on Twitch three days a week. Link is down in the description below. If you want to see more of my OBS guides, make sure to check this video right over here. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out and have a good one. Bye bye.